Hello and welcome to Border Life. His name's on an ancient Borders tree, but you'll have seen his work on a packet of porridge. This week are links to one of Scotland's most successful commercial artists. We meet the Kakubri author, shining new light on the late, great Tom Kerr. What Tom had to do in his work was turn his hand to any brief. And in doing so, he could make anything deliver I appeal. We know the pictures. Let's know the man. Plus, a night spent under the stars. We meet the couple offering a taste of life on the road. We realise that people come here for rest, relaxation, rejuvenation. So it's very much well-being in the meadow. And they're, they're romantic, they're eco, they're chic, they're magnifique. But first... To a man you may not have heard of, but whose work you will most certainly have seen. Tom Kerr worked in Edinburgh for a print and design company, but he's also an artist with links to our part of the world, not least with a new book about his life. Oh, it does. Uh, Kukubri, the fishing town. I went to Kukubrisha to meet author and academic Dr. Sandy Brewer. So, Sandy, how long has it taken you to write the book? More years than I care to mention, but if forced, 15 years, if you include that it started out as an article. We're going in here? Yes. Okay. Sandy Tom Kerr was obviously a brilliant artist and prolific as well. How talented was he? Well, he was recognised as a, an excellent artist from being an apprentice. He won a King's Prize at the Art College, and this is, he was attending the Art College day release, night study, etc., as part of the apprentice system, which in those days was very, very thorough. And he won prize after prize. Tom Kerr was a commercial painter. His job to create early 20th century images for promotions and adverts. What Tom had to do in his work was turn his hand to any brief. And in doing so, he could make anything deliver eye appeal. Sandy, tell me about Tom's childhood. He was born in Edinburgh. Uh, he attended Daniel Stewart's college, uh, as did his elder brother. But the main thing is he was born into a family for whom faith was absolutely paramount. His mother and father were both Baptists, very active in their local church, and Tom followed in their footsteps. Tom Kerr's own faith would see him through terrible times. During the First World War, he was sent to the front. Passchendaele was the place where thousands of Scots soldiers died and his Batman died ahead of him, as he said, as they went over the bags and got to the second line. He'd said at one point that you get used to this, all the people you knew dying and what have you, but he never did. Tom survived the battle for a purpose. Artistic skills and a background in printing saw him put to work designing vital military maps. Yet, like so many others, the fighting had a profound effect. Later paintings remembering those who fell around him. Yet by now, Tom Kerr was back in Edinburgh and tackling less solemn commissions. I'm thinking of that very famous picture on the porridge oats packet. Oh yes, that's iconic, isn't it? It is, and yet it wasn't for advertising. That was produced as a gift to the Scots family. According to Duncan, his son, in the late 1940s, so that painting now hangs in the boardroom of the Quaker Oats factory in Cooper Fife. 
So many of his things are still here today. So much of his work, for instance, uh, on the cover of the timeline produced by the Royal Highland Agricultural Show Society, uh, sent out to all their members last year, but in preparation for the 200th anniversary celebrations this year, what was on the cover of the timeline? But a Tom Kerr poster for the Dumfries Highland Show and inside yet another one for the, for the Alloa show. You can go to bookshops in Hay on Wye and you will see posters that are by Tom Kerr showing the Cunard a woman. He painted it for the year that the Queen Mary arrived in New York. And that is reproduced everywhere. The images stand the test of time, and the Portobello bathing beauty is enormously popular. Closer to home, Tom Kerr produced work for what was once one of the Scottish border's biggest employers. Here at the Heritage Hub in Hoyk, Peter Scott, or PESCO memorabilia, remembers his connection to the town. He, he had a, a gift, I would say. He was a gifted artist. But certainly you can tell his style when you look at things. And if you couldn't tell the style, you could always see the name. Tom Kerr signed much of his work. But back to the PESCO archive. Tom Kerr worked as a graphic designer for McLagan and Cumming in Edinburgh and PESCO's employed them, and Tom Kerr in particular, to do artwork for them. So this went into their marketing material. He could turn his hand to anything, uh, people, places, anything you like, from a man kicking a goal in rugby to ladies in their scanties for a PESCO's ad campaign, anything at all. He was a very devout man and got involved in doing artwork for the Sunday schools and the Scripture Union and various things. Well, Cathy, we know that he painted religious things because here in your archive you have this rather beautiful poster. It is rather gorgeous. Colours are so vivid. A doctor looking after a young child. Possibly what we would recognise today as missionary work. And you've got his... Signature and the again we have well. we have his signature, yes. That's so we know it's his. So we definitely know it's one of his. Perhaps nowadays folk maybe wouldn't like some of the material, but it was done with great kindness and great love at the time. But when we look at it with our sensibilities today, we might kind of go, okay, but it's a part of history and it's a vital part of history. Tom Kerr is thought to have been the artist behind this Hoyk quotation book, sold by PESCO during the war to raise money for charities. The pictures on the front and the back look very much like his work, and people who would buy it to help fund the war effort because they would have had brothers and sons and cousins fighting so far away from home. Tom Kerr didn't just work commercially. His paintings of horses are now highly collectible. In fact, Tom Kerr never sat still. Not just painter, but Edinburgh Bailey, charity supporter, broadcaster and cartoonist. Most people who know, and who have read the book say, how did he do it all? There are only so many hours in the day. And he just was driven. And I will argue the point whether people accept it, um, that it all goes back to his experiences in the First World War. When you have lived with the threat of every day being your last, when you have seen your fellow soldiers die alongside you, his regiment's motto is never forget. The translation is never forget and he never did. His recruitment posters are also a way of expressing his respect for the Scottish soldiery. His work for 
the British Legion is a continuation of that. There was more. Always a man of God, Tom Kerr ran a branch of the Christian youth organisation, the Boys' Brigade. That had lapsed because of the First World War, not least because officers had been killed, old boys had been killed. So Tom decided that he was going to start it again. And it became the largest company in the Edinburgh Battalion. It was his life's work, in addition to his paid work. And the men who passed through that company never forgot that. And there's another link to our part of the world. Tom Kerr regularly brought Boys Brigade members to camp in the borders. Here on the Riddle Estate near Lillysleaf, his name remembered on an ancient tree. How proud do you think Scotland should be of Tom Kerr? Immensely proud. And I have to say that I was somewhat disappointed when I travelled up to the newly opened V&A, magnificent building in Dundee, to see an exhibition that was about the golden age of the cruise. Not to have any of Tom Kerr's work, a Scottish artist who produced innumerable pieces uh, of work, and nothing was there. I enjoyed the exhibition, but I thought that was a loss. And it's about time there was an exhibition somewhere of this man's work so that he receives the recognition that has long been missing. Tom Kerr images standing the test of time and Dr. Sandy Brewer, the Kakubrisha author on why his name should be more widely known. Coming up in Border Life. So, this is Ruby. The Borders couple, offering a taste of life on the road. You and I both always saw a series of room lots, just like Van Gogh's painting, Encampment of Gypsies, around the campfire. We tried to create an oasis within nature and have everybody in their own space and everyone's different.